What's up, Trekkies? Hi. So, anniversary event's coming up this Thursday. The anniversary giveaway has already started. Today, the 26th, it is two fresh civilization points for every character. Logged in on one character to get it because I have a lot of people on my friends list that have, I don't know, what looks to be 13 characters or more. So they're going to be cycling them throughout the entire day. And I'm just like, can I just, like, this is so, uh, I had people like that in my WoW guild where they would, like, get something on all their characters. I was like, oh my god, stop cycling all your characters. You haven't leveled that character in four years. Why are you? And there'll be a free thing every day for the next week. So 10 a.m. Pacific. That's 10 a.m. Pacific. That's 1 o'clock Eastern. Free thing will be available. Okay, so for the anniversary event, things are, you're going to get another beep. Sixth anniversary, it'll be a Mark Six. There will be a couple things coming out for the anniversary event. One, the anniversary, like, event, and then a mini game in and of itself that's tied to the anniversary event, which you get all the, you know, just like the winter event, just like the summer event. The, a new episode coming out Thursday. Talk about all of these things, not necessarily in that order. I have the tabs in the order I want to talk. The first thing we're going to go over is basically the Omega Particle mini game, because this is and is and is not complicated. So I have it in my head because I've done it at least once before and once I realized what the hell I was doing, I was addicted to doing it. People use this thing to make a whole crap ton of energy credits and they basically milk off the, they milk off the lazy people. What I use it for is getting free upgrade crap. Because if you go into your special projects in your crafting tab, you'll see something about Omega Particles and they're all like little horizontal canisters with little things. The mini game, what it is, is it opens up a little tiny box and it's got four lines. And if you look at it carefully, it's a one, two, and a three, and a four. What you do is you use your, you can use your mouse, but I use my arrow keys up and down. And you move the little cursor up and down, kind of like there's like, it's almost like a DD, whatever. The arrows are basically coming in this direction. You have to, it's that. So you have to like move the arrows up and down and, and you have to basically play the notes. And they get faster every time you complete you nullify an Omega. The, you just have, it doesn't matter how often you do it, just that you do it for the actual reputation, for the reputation event thing that you get six anniversary things that I'll talk about the ship here in just a second. Mega particle thing is if you, you can build it up and you just like dilithium mining, you get more dilithium, the, the better you do at it. The better you do, you'll get like, and it's a red, yellow, and a blue. So you'll get red, two red, three red maybe. And then you'll get like a silver and a red. And I think one time I got really high up there, I got a silver and like two red, two of the color. I haven't gotten anything higher. I think that's, but trust me, if you see the crafting system, getting a silver is amazing because a red, a green, and a blue, red, a yellow, and blue, whatever color it happens to be, colorblind here. <laughs> um, I think it's yellow because of tactical engineering and science, but anyways, um, one of each of those makes a silver. Then you need three silvers to make a shard and a shard and three shards to make a fragment. And then you need three fragments to make the special event weapon tech thing, which is 25,600 points towards an upgrade thing, four times quality improvement chance, no dilithium cost. This is like upgrade palooza. And if you don't really need anything to upgrade now, hold on to these things because the next upgrade event that happens, you'll get like twice as much research points or whatever the things are and then you can just upgrade all of your stuff for amazing as it costs no day lithium. So that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to be grabbing a bunch of these because I could move everything up to like, you know, mark 14. I just don't really want to spend all that day lithium. It's opportunity cost for me. I'm going to put that again here. We've got, I'm going to put the list on the screen here. So I'll move over. You've got red, yellow, blue makes a silver. Three silvers makes a shard. Three shards make a fragment. Three fragments make the tech. So now you can see why when you do the minigame and you get a silver, you basically get three things for free and you get others. So it's really beneficial. And these things don't necessarily, they don't take a long time to complete, but you can scan the crap out of these things and just build up a lot of like red, yellows and greens and silvers if you're good at the minigame. And just cycle through your entire R&D. And if you've got a good R&D, like six long, like I do, then yeah. You can just churn out this stuff pretty easily. And you can still do it past the event. So don't worry about making sure you make them all during the event because you have this stuff during. 
And you can also sell this stuff later if you really don't need it, and that's how people are making money because the tech upgrade Omega technology is absolutely great, and people want to buy that, but it's bop, so they buy all the component pieces, such as Omega Fragments. That'll be, then you make three of those and you make the bop item, so yeah, that's that. All right, moving on. Okay, so remember, you just have to go to the various things when Q gives you your quest. He'll be like, go to Vulcan, go to Andoria Space, go to such and such, or it might even be Bajor or something. Go to three areas, scan the particle. That's it. You don't need to accumulate numbers. It says in the thing, Q doesn't care about what score you get, just as long as you do it. And you just have to complete that quest and he'll give you X number of, and you need a thousand to get the ship. The ship is a Krenum uh, science ship. There is no absolute stats out on it yet, so I don't know what bridge slotting it's going to have or whatnot. It looks to be, like, it's called a science vessel, so this is definitely going to have target subsystems. I hope. I mean, I'm going to get it anyways because it's a science vessel and win, and this is the first, like, event science vessel that's not the Dyson Science Destroyer, which was... Is that, is that an event? I just know I have it. And it's great for Admiralty, but... Mm. So, it's the console is a time sta tem timeline stabilizer. Universal console can be put on any starship. Any starship. You don't have to. Universal console, this is what's amazing about it. Activating the console will stabilize any temporal anomalies around your starship. This has a side effect of briefly increasing the flow of time within and around your starship. Enemies affected by this console will suffer a penalty to their recharge times, flight speed, and turn rate. Your starship will receive a boost to both recharge times and weapon activation times per affected foe. The console also provides the passive reduction to all science bridge officer abilities. Obviously, I'm going to be using this ship because it's got a mastery. I also kind of want the one out of the box, but we'll talk that one in a second. The starship trait for this ship, improved feedback pulse. Probably something I would equip on a ship. Makes feedback pulse do additional damage, probably based on particle generators because it's a science thing. Each time you hit... You are hit while Feedback Pulse is active. You gain a buff that boosts your crit hit and crit severity. This buff stacks 10 times. It doesn't tell me the exact number. So is it a 30%? Is it a 15%? At a stack of 10, but could be a 20%. I don't know. There's no number as to per stack. That would have been, that'll probably be in the, it says look up, look for a follow-up blog in the near future that will detail the stats of this awesome new tier six ship. Still not posted and it's 11-12. Next thing about the anniversary event is Time and Tide episode, which is a featured episode. I don't know its rewards. It doesn't have them listed here. Time and Tide continues our new season and our new story and includes great rewards that you can earn over the course of several weeks. It's a featured episode. This is how it works. In addition to the reward from completing the daily from our daily anniversary event. For a limited time, Time and Tide will be available to all players level 10 and up. Romulan players must have selected a faction. After this, there will be a normal mission journal progression. As the first map is in the Delta Quadrant, players less than level 50 can access the mission through the Dyson Sphere gateway near the Jurunet. Juret. Juret. System. Whatever. The gate. <laughs> we are proud to present the featured episode celebrating our sixth anniversary. Look forward to seeing you. Basically, according to this, is we are being pulled forward in time to witness the Temporal Accords being signed. Which is not more like the Kittimer Accords rather than the signing of the Federation, is what I'm guessing. It says the captain comes from a key period in history in the tw early 25th century. That's when the Federation and its allies embarked on a new era of exploration in a new frontier. Time itself. We're being brought forward to watch that. Mm, yeah. And so that's going. Also coming up Thursday, new lockbox. Because this last week and weekend, we've been dealing with random lockbox drop. Which, that always means... Coming up with a new lockbox. I like this time because I can read up on them. Because when I get, like, a crap time, if I forget about my stipend, I usually am like, ooh, keys, bye, bye, bye. And I'll like, ooh, I look, I have 15 keys. And then I'll, like, open one of each of the older boxes. I usually keep a stack of the old boxes. Why? Got a decor out of it. Because I opened up the Ferengi box. The announcement of this box, basically, the big ship, literally, <laughs> we fought these things a lot, is a tarantula, the Tholian tarantula. When you do the Tholian red alert, it's the one that's named, well, there's two of them there, but one of them's named. If anyone understands Zlopak, it's the thing that and like spin, 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 <laughs> that. And it seals your thing, it, pray to God you pre-put on hazard emitters, because you can't act, anyways. Ha <laughs> I had numerous times from that one. Yeah, the Tholian Tarantula Dreadnought, it's tier six, it's a cruiser. No, no s real stats on it. Comes with the web cannon console, which is the <laughs> f 
following Starship trait, Energy Web. While this trait is slotted, activation of Beam Overload, Surgical Strikes, or Cannon Rapid Fire, your next attack will cause your foe to be trapped in an Energy Web. Enemies trapped in the Energy Web will suffer heavy shield penetrating physical damage over time and briefly they're held in place. The ability's damage is improved by Ox Power and Starship Particle Generators, which makes me think this is going to be kind of a, a cruiser with like maybe Lieutenant Commander Science, and plus Surgical Strikes, so maybe Intel? Science Intel, maybe? I don't know. Uh, energy Web can be triggered once every 45 seconds, so that's pretty decent. I mean, you use Cannon Rapid Fire, uh, not really Beam Overload, because that takes, but in this ship, maybe. It's not the ship I want, though. I want the Mirror, the, okay, the Mirror Incursion Lockbox also includes a chance to win the Tholian Mesh Weaver Escort, which seems pretty cool. Nimble Tier 5 ship is designed to harry enemies while keeping them hemmed inside web walls. So you might have the ability or a console on there to create web walls, which is cool. Really good for, um, really good for probably the Kobayashi Maru mission. And like stop things from hitting that, that I don't know. Uh, Lobi Store now offers the Paradox Temporal Dreadnought. Oh, oh, it's from the Lobi Store. Don't have to worry about the box. Bye, Felicia. Okay, cool. Mirror Universe Ship, one of the most powerful ships in the Terran Empire fleet. Uh, using advanced technology from the future is both durable and nimble. The ship includes Lieutenant, Com Lieutenant Tactical Command Seat and Lieutenant Commander Lieutenant Tactical Slash Command Seat and Lieutenant Commander Universal Intel Seat for extraordinary flexibility. So Intel and Command. Uh, Paradox Temporal Dreadnought includes the Temporal Rift Stabilizer Console that generates temporal anomalies along the forward line of the ship. These anomalies slow enemies and cause kinetic damage as they warp and destabilize the timeline. That's pretty nasty. But additionally, flying the, pa the Paradox Temporal Dreadnought enables unlocking of the Starship trait, Unstable Anomalies. While this trait is slotted, your Gravity Well and Tykan's Rift, I use both, anomalies will cause heavy kinetic damage in a five kilometer area when they expire. This damage is improved by Starship Particle Generator skill. Which I have a lot of. So, I might be buying that ship. Mainly because it's also a temporal dreadnought. I don't know. No stats on it. So, yeah. Other things that come out of this lockbox. Um, genetic sequencers. Because traits, yay. Ground is the agony modulator. When you use control power kit. Pretty much anything science. It causes confuse, disable, hold, etc. Power causes a damage over time effect on your target. So, yeah. Blissful agony. When you suffer, con when you suffer a control effect you get plus resist against such effects, plus damage resistance and a small heal over time. So, yeah. Uh, invasive control programming versus secret command codes, same thing but for space. Oh no, except for you know, when you activate a control effect on a foe, such as jam sensors, uh, add a random subsystem offline effect. And then while you suffer a control effect or a subsystem offline, temporarily gain plus damage resistance, plus resistance to control effects and a small heal over time. So that's that. There are Terran Empire kit packs. Don't actually say what they have. In addition to offering a standard skill bonuses, each kit, f oh, kit frame enhances the duration of your control type power. Uh, Terran weapons have fallen into the hands of allied forces as a result of the current incursion. Terran Empire Agony Phaser weapon packs. Agony Phaser, Agony Phaser. This sounds so much worse than it probably is. Uh, opening a pack allows for a, allows for a choice of beam cannon or ground weapon. Beam weapons packs grant either beam array or dual beam bank and a small chance of a 360 beam. Cannon packs include a turret, single cannon, dual cannon, or dual heavy cannon with a small chance of the wide angle. Uh, ground weapons either grant a tur Terran Agony Phaser stun pistol, multi-beam rifle, and have distinctive Terran Empire look. Uh, all the links are below for this stuff. It's also got Mirror Universe uniforms. Additionally, a special set of Jupiter Terran Empire uniforms. Adds more variants, including Admiral Lita's mirror uniform pieces. Ooh. Uh, the low buy store now, increase, now includes several pieces of additional gear, including sonic phasers. Uh, Terran Empire uses specifically tuned ground weapons for fighting Tholians. Sonic phasers have, a dish, have the agony phaser effects also inflict 20% more damage when used against Tholian. They have a unique coloration to reflect their Terran origin. Tholian toy vanity pets. And those are adorable! Ugh. These tiny little machines designed to resemble Tholian EV suits. Tholian toy packs grant a blue, green, purple, or gold Tholian toy. They're so cute! They look like something out of StarCraft, honestly. They look like something from the Protoss. They're so brightly colored. <gasps> Anyways, and other things from the lockbox are the fleet credit bonus pools, CXP bonus, the, the bonus pools. 
Catalyst rating, salvage technologies, the insert consolation prize, plus low buy. So all this is coming out on Thursday. This has been a long vlog. It's been a big news brief. And I've been complaining the last couple weeks about nothing. And now I have like a long video. Anyways, uh, have fun during the event. Remember, key points, you don't need to be good at the event to get your daily event thing, just do it. But if you do happen to be pretty good at it, you could probably farm up some Omega Particle things and either make some money if you really want money and don't care about upgrading or do good upgrades. Catch you guys later. Bye.